there are people from the Muslim community who are using Islam and tr trying to justify attacks on, on United States or Canada or the Western world or anywhere in the world to kill innocent civilian and people. Uh, so that is, I think it is an obligation upon all of us as a Muslim to stand up and say, no, this has nothing to do with Islam. Islam absolutely condemns it. There is a punishment for those people who carry out these kind of heinous crimes, uh, even against any segment of society, whether they are Muslim or non-Muslim, Jews, Christians, Hindus, Sikhs, atheists. You cannot do these things in the name of Islam. I will be explaining a beautiful book by Sheikh Jamil Zino, Muhammad Jamil Zino, Messages, Guidelines to Reform the Muslim in an individual level and in a social level. Brothers and sisters in Islam, there is no question that our Ummah is in desperate need for reforms. And, of course, the first step toward the reform is to learn, is to read, or to hear someone who reads. Insha'Allah, we'll be reading this book in Salahuddin uh, every day after Fajr and between Maghrib and Isha, and we'll allow question and answers. Uh, direct message. The book is so beautiful because it's focused. Uh, it's not detailed-oriented uh, uh, textbook. Uh, it's very short. Inshallah, we'll be able to cover it. اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وعلي بفضلك كلمة الحق والدين اللهم انصر المجاهدين في سبيلك في كل مكان اللهم وحد صفوفهم واجمع كلمتهم وانصرهم على عدوك وعدوهم اللهم فك قيد أسران وأسر المسلمين وردهم إلى هنيم سالمين There was a time when this area that we call Turkey there was no Muslims, there was no Islam, right? And then people came in, in Turkey in particular, it was not a result of merchants coming with da'wah. It was a result of jihad. Muslim came, people became Muslims as a, as a result of the fact that Muslims came with the sword, established sharia, and as a result of the establishment of sharia, many people found that there's a need to become Muslims in order to avoid fitna. But the generations to come, now you as a Muslim, you are happy that your forefathers would happen. They accepted Islam even though they may, it may have been under the sword, right? You are happy with that, no? Because you are happy with being what? Allahu Akbar. Are you worried now about your forefathers having been, you know, uh, told to, to accept? Well, they, didn't work, they were not told to accept Islam. There were conditions that existed according to Sharia that forced certain people to avoid difficulty. To, for example, jizya is one of them, right? Jizya is one of them paying the, this little taxation out of the people that are not from Islam. Why? Because it's a price they pay for being protected by the Muslim authority. There are some Muslims amongst us, amongst us these days who want to go around and say, oh, Islam was never spread by the sword. That's a blatant lie. It was spread many times by the sword. The Sharia was spread by the sword. The implementation of Sharia was spread by the sword. I change what I mean is is to improve the lives of people. That's why Islam came. And that's what it did in the time of the Prophet ﷺ. Of course, in improving the lives of people, changes have to be made. So it may seem, from one perspective, that Islam took over, so to speak. In 2050, the number of Muslims is the number of Muslims. It is the number of Muslims. ننظر بأن المسلمين 
فتى عثمانية فتحوا بولندا النمسا وأصبحت على أسوار فيينا دولة الإسلام عاصمة النمسا ورفع فيها الأذان ودول الاتحاد السوفيتي كانت جميعها تحت ظل الدولة الإسلامية بلاد القوقاز وما وراءها حتى سنة 1644 كان المغول المسلمون يحكمون الصين في سنة 1526 فتح المسلمون المجر في 1586 كانت الهند تحكم بالإسلام إذا يعني هذا بدلل على إيه؟ على أن هذه الأحداث تنبئ أنه بمقدور أمة الإسلام أن تعود كما كانت وأن يعني تنشر دين الإسلام بإذن الله عز وجل فإذا القضية بأنه سينشر سلطان الإسلام على العالم كله بإحدى ثلاث الإسلام أو الجزية أو نستعين بالله عز وجل ونقاتلهم حتى يخضع العالم جميعا Islam is actually become a kind of solution for humanity and it is only we, we I'm saying for example really if it Allah SWT use us it is best service we can do to make Islam for a real solution for humanity I'll tell you who wants to bring Sharia law The Canadian government wants to bring Sharia law and this is not a joke and we want to give support to this call to re-establish the Khilafah when I look towards Allah and I see that He has affiliations with Iran, has no affiliations with Canada, with America, I say I have affiliations with Iran. You have to know that this is not going to stop, it is only the beginning. And as it goes forward, these are the steps towards the one government that is going to be over the whole world. And that is the government of the Imam of the time, Imam Mahdi Salam. We will stand as we stood today, as we will stand in the future for any insult that comes to the Prophet. And you should know this, that this is going to continue. It will not stop and guard our witness. We will see the day when religion of Allah will overpower all of these oppressors and justice and peace will rule the world. All people, Canadian and all people around the world, from an Islamic point of view, there's absolutely nothing radical about wanting caliphate or wanting sharia. Our loyalty is to the khilafah if it exists, and it's to the khilafah if it doesn't exist. Our vision of what the khilafah is and what we're working towards remains, and it's going to be re-established, inshallah. And our loyalty must remain with it, whether it's present or absent. Because it's the only thing we are allowed to have loyalty towards, the full implementation of Islam. The Sharia is the law of God, the law of Allah, which is good for all times, all people, in all places. That is the reality. Wherever Muslims are able to apply it, it is their duty to apply it.